Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. James Conrad is going to be the world champion. Yeah, it's over. Oh my I mean, gosh. Paul has, Paul has 80 feet for par. James is no. 10 feet. No! No! Unbelievable finish oh to throw God. in from 250 feet. Hello and welcome back to all of you here in the studio with us, to those on the live stream and to everybody on YouTube watching. Nine holes are left in the 2022 Pro World Championship. Watch them with us here on Joe Miz Pro. It's Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. The three shot lead that Aaron started the round with has evaporated. Paul McBeth and Aaron are tied at the top. They are trailed only by two shots by Anthony Barella on the chase card. Tristan Tanner also right there in the mix. It's going to take a monumental effort by anyone else if they want to win the world title. And honestly, it's going to take a monumental effort from either Aaron, Paul, anyone to win this world title. Nine holes left. This is going to be great. Yeah, it is. I feel like the storyline so far is Aaron's given himself a lot of looks. Let's see how Paul has done on this hole in the last couple of rounds. Very wide with the hyzer, but look how that opens up the fairway perfectly with that low speed zone. Up first, we've got Matt Orm. He loves it. Go in. Oh my goodness. Fought through it. That was on the trajectory for a highlight ace. Catches some last limbs, but I think settles up inside 20 feet. Oh, and look, Macbeth taking a page out of Aaron's book and going with that zone forehand. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Oh, you don't want to. There's another forehand that Paul has not messed up. Yeah. He kind of he kind of does that. When he pulls out that sidearm, he makes it happen. He, he could consider the all sidearm approach. This is wide. No, I like it's fine it. though. Why do I think they're always too wide? Oh, it doesn't really skip, but long look. Very short cut rolls into the edge of the wood. It can be pretty dicey, short and right in the woods. And at this point, Calvin's really gonna have to start. He has to make everything. He has to birdie it, out. And that's, his focus has gotta be just podium. I mean, he's gotta try to win it, of course, birdie every single hole he can, but he still have, has an opportunity to get top three. Aaron from 50 again. This one across the front. It's going to give Macbeth another chance. He hasn't been able to take that solo lead yet. But it's looking like pretty likely right here that he might be taking it for the first time. Par save for Calvin. And if that's how far Calvin was, then Paul is going to be significantly closer. And is Aaron ta Oh my goodness. So wow. Paul is part. Yeah. I was thinking yesterday, if Aaron got to six under par on the day, that would give him a mighty fine chance to be mm. the world champion. He's at two. I well, still think that's, yes. that's pretty close to the number he's yes. got to get to. Yeah, that would require means. nine in the round, which is a really, really good round out here. Macbeth pushes two six under, and that is, I believe, the first lead he's had? Yes, solo, certainly. Wow. Now, with Macbeth taking the lead, if Aaron were to come back and somehow win this, I think it would be maybe even more impressive than if he just had played the way he had been playing on the front nine and just held on to the lead the whole way. Can Aaron rewrite a new story? Yeah. Well, I also feel like now that he doesn't have the lead, it might be a little the, bit more the, relaxing, yeah. a different feeling. 
of then trying to protect something that's now not there. Yeah. This is hung out wide. He's asking for it to swing back and not in time before hitting the big tree on the green, but he's going to have an open look with the rollout. Not what Matty O was looking for, but still inside the circle. Wide all depends on if the ground play is yep. in his favor and with a skip forward, very good. Doesn't need the high speed disc for the distance clearly at only 400 feet, but he chooses to go with that disc because the way it bites into the ground. Lower line, good width. So good. Oh and, yeah. And this is why Aaron Gossage is at 41 under par, soon to be 42. I mean, with just a decent display of putting, he'd have still that three shot lead. Mm. He has to put it close. That's bullseye. He's gonna have to have a lot more of those, I feel like. Perfect shot. With as close as Paul and Aaron are, I can't help but think ahead to 12. And what mm. kind of decision making, because that's one of the most pivotal holes on this whole course and one of the biggest opportunities for major stroke swings. Matteo jumps, Matteo hits. And there's the first down praise to Nick Saban. <laughs> Nobody reacts like Matty. No one. Nobody's there's not another person in the planet. Like, look how many jumps. I mean, that's 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 two at us. least two jumps and two first downs on the way in. That's thirty-two and a half feet away. <laughs> it's a lot to get done in that amount of distance. Star frame. This has got to come in as one of the easier holes. We we'll get star frame back out here and play some more music. I think we will. Seven under now. Now Gossage about to get to three under, and no bogeys. Still, which is which is very important. Bogeys give you that kind of mental, like it's it's obviously worse than par goes without saying. But there's something about that mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mentality that goes into it. And this is a brand new hole this year. We have no storylines to draw off in the past. The risk reward factor is huge on 12, 400 plus clearance to get in bounds. And if you do go out of bounds going straight at it, you don't get to advance more than 10 feet. It's gonna be a retee if you don't make Aaron it in bounds. has been playing for par. Yes. I think he probably still will. I think Paul has as well. I don't like how turned over this is. Yeah, this is looking sketchy. Really? Safe. In bounds. Okay. Okay, so Paul certainly happy to make a three here if he can just get it over this tree. This will give us a pretty good indication of how desperate Aaron is feeling, where his head's at. Does he feel like he needs to go here? No. He's got blue blaster. I think this is probably the right play. Live to fight another day. But you can't make a mistake here. Still a tough Still shot. Still a tough shot. A little inside, but I think it's yeah, fine. I love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plenty of flatness at the top. You know who's not laying up? Uh, Calvin Heimberg. No. He's going over. If Calvin were up by four shots right now, I think he'd still be making this play. This is just the Calvin Heimberg yeah, play. Yeah, the gap is huge when you're Calvin. Yep. Awesome. Those are the bullseye whiskers that you can see right there. Shout out, dude. Yeah. We got a major shout yeah, out. Yeah, that wasn't even that good, folks, okay? Because Ezra Aderhold went ahead and did it in one. Ace on this hole. 450 uphill 
Ezra said, this is the easiest hole I've ever played in my life and just did it in one That's shot. That's an incredible ace. Oh, dream. I like how you can see the disparity here with Matt being a good 100 feet away from the basket, Paul and Aaron being in the middle of the fairway. So many different ways to play this hole. Great hole. Oh, Matt Oram. What shot will he go with? It looks like he's lining the hyzer. Shouldn't be too much in the way. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, well done. I can't believe Aaron. Aaron is close to having enough forehand to get putts. It, it's remarkable. It's insane. Macbeth throws the forehand big, and look, he's got this forehand mm -hmm. little slider approach. Does Aaron have another, like, kind of halfway jump putt at this, or what? It's probably in that range, though. No, yeah, he's going to have to throw a little forehand. But yesterday, he kind of did have a, a bit of a putt. Big birdie opportunity for Calvin. And only loses one to Ezra Aderhold here on 12. Second hardest hole in the course. Taking his time and delivering the par save is Aaron. And Mattia will do the same. Heading over to 13, which is another very quick two stroke swing opportunity. Potential make a break we saw in the 2016 World Championships with Valerie Jenkins. But first, we're going to check in here. Back to hole nine with Tristan Tanner. I think we might see one a little bit farther than yeah. Calvin's maybe. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> that is just <laughs> smoothest forehand in the game, I think. And when Eagle's healthy, Tristan Tanner, Eagle, so smooth, so effortless. Don't forget about Matt Sexton. <laughs> I, I won't ever say that. Tristan leaving himself short after that big drive, but a better opportunity connects. Huge putt, great front nine. And like we said, he is definitely a factor if he can get things going on the back nine as well. Left side of the basket, scary thing to do here on 11, but stays in bounds. 39 under par. What a week. For a player that's not even qualified for the United States Disc Golf Championship yet. Yeah, about, he's got about, what, 30 minutes to wait for that invitation. It, yeah, no doubt. And that, he could be a dangerous, dangerous player at a place like the absolutely. USDC. Absolutely as he's just charging towards the leaders of the world championships, I guess. Kind of a silly comment that I made there. <laughs> Hole 13, par three, 397. Look at that cart path. OB, just 15 feet right of the basket. You have to hang it out over the OB. Trust the finish of your disc here. Calvin doesn't quite commit. So he's going to have a little longer putt to deal with. I feel like that's the right play. Safer play. Yep. Push it to the left side so you don't hang it out over the All right. Can we push the crowd just a little bit, like a hair? Or is that not doable? I feel like they're just hair to play. Well, that tells me he's planning on going pretty wide here. Come on, Julio. Go. Come on, Julio. Julio Jones, Solid. former wide receiver for Alabama, if you guys weren't following along at home.
big tee shots. Inside, and that's how much skip? Play. How much skip? Quite a bit. Yeah, see one. Oh, 24. Maybe. No, oh, it's 24. Yeah. Very he's close. very close. Nice. Now he's been throwing this flex shot and I personally don't like it. It's a gutsy thing to yep. do. Oh, this is Boy. wide, but it's big getting... finish, big finish. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Aaron. Oh what a God. gussy shot. So much Anheuser is such a stable disc. You I'm missed wondering. this angle by a fraction and kiss your chances to win the championship goodbye. Yeah, really? You just cannot make a big mistake with a two-stroke swing to Paul McBeth at this moment. Two feet right of where he hits, yep. and that doesn't come Out of bounds. In. That was amazing. What a shot in this moment. Tom Brady? Or come on, baby. <laughs> Not. There's no way he said Tom. Sweet. I love it, man. It's just passion. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron's part. Let's see if we see the Paul fist pump here. Okay, at least you are 30, yeah, 30, oh, 35. The camera tricks. <laughs> we huge, saw it. Huge putt. Wow. I think you're right. I think that might have been outside the circle. I was on the germ side. I, I made that mistake before. I keep saying I won't ever make it again. <laughs> Fantastic birdie from Aaron, and one putt away from another star frame on 13, a very difficult hole. On hole. 14, this is a must get birdie. Hole 14, par five, 975 feet. We've seen some people get some big drives. You're gonna wanna throw it through this gap, left to right, drift or down the hill. Out of bounds left, out of bounds right. The only thing you cannot do is have that come out into Heiser and skip left. We have seen some people throw some pretty big rollers down there as well. I feel like we might see the blue bomber from Gossage and we'll see Paul do the same thing with the sidearm. Two position plays is all you need. Just I love a little bit of awkward slip there for Macbeth. You know, he has been battling injuries all week, cramps in the leg. His left hand has been an interesting situation. He's had to change his form a bit. Just the all-time scrappiest player. I mean, he's just willing himself. One stroke lead. We saw Calvin in the previous round go after this one. I think with the position that he's in, we're going to see that again. Only seen one eagle on the hole this week, and it was by Ricky Wysocki. Second round. Calvin's got a lot of angle on this and don't think he's going to be in a good spot for the eagle. No, but that's just fine. Mm -hmm. This has got to this has got to be the easiest, easiest hole in the course. Easiest hole in the course, yeah. 4.35. It's it nearly averages about the same as the par four that we played at DDO just a few months back. But obviously we had a lot more wind back then. Play here is just to get down to the bottom of the hill near the old basket position by that big tree. And just set yourself up for that 200 foot approach. I think all four players are in a good spot to do that. OK, 
conditions for scoring are just unbelievable for this tournament. I believe Ricky won the DDO with a 10 under par. Yeah. Total. It was so windy that, I mean, it's just- 10 been, under felt unreasonably good. Yes. Yeah. And so much nicer this week. Only mistake you can make here is going for too much. I don't expect these guys to do that. Matt Sexton would never do that. Never. Calvin does indeed take his medicine and plays that one down to the bottom of the hill. In round four, we saw Aaron throw two great shots and leave his approach about 35 feet short and he missed that putt. Can he clean up that mistake today and birdie the hole that he has to get? We will see here in a moment. Yeah, the third shot's definitely the trickiest shot for the hole, having that hill right before the basket you can barely see it you gotta have a little bit of touch coming into the green paul's lining up the backhand it's kind of funny that the, the easy shot in the hole is the 400 footers the two 400 footers those are the easy ones it's the 185 that's left that yeah that gets really tricky wouldn't call it good no it's, it's not great it's all right This is when the practice pays off. This should be about the spot you've been in every practice round. Gotta have this shot dialed and Aaron's done much better today. Pin high, 16 feet away. Slightly closer than Paul, I think. I still don't like him not being in the bullseye from mm -hmm. what I've seen so far. You guys getting the nervies for him too? My palms are sweaty, knees weak. He's so good at those short range little floaters. Macbeth, nervy little 27 footer. For everyone else in the world. Now this is a nervy little 21 footer. Great. Well done. Confident stroke there. I like the speed. You see both of these guys, they know exactly what it's for after every putt made. It doesn't matter if it's 20 feet, 15, all the way out to that 30 feet. They're fist pumping, trying to keep their mind quiet, but show a little emotion, show everybody that they're there and they're focused. What have we talked about in the world championships leading up to the final four holes? 15, 16, 17, 18 are all two stroke swing potential. And we have a one shot lead going into these final four as we check in Gatekeeper Media, Tristan Tanner, 460 Heiser sidearm. Pushing wow. significantly farther than anybody. Yeah. Maybe the, too far. Wow. Jump Push putt. Nearly to the fence. Ooh. Oh, no. Doesn't matter. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Good birdie. 42 under. Now, this is what we've got waiting for us. 15, the first of two island holes in a row. Tristan takes it wide. This island is very generous. And he's got another... 40 footer. You want to win the world title? You Man. gotta make these putts. What an event Tristan Tanner is having. A real quick shout out before we look at 15 to Seppo Paiu and Reed Frescura with the other two Eagles on hole 14. Nice. Like we said, this is an island hole for 
39 out of bounds will take you to a drop zone where you're 200 feet away. There is no saving par. So super important for all these guys to get in bounds. Matt does more than that. He finds the bullseye. Perfect drive. Matt's having a nice back nine. Very nice back nine. A couple jump putts to get the momentum going. First downs. I mean, look at all these spectators. Disc golf has changed recently with all the ticket sales. Matt Oren puts on the show. You get what you, you get what you pay for when you come to watch him play. So exciting. Macbeth with the Zeus. This looks pretty good. Needs to get around this initial tree. Oh, the roll. That that's OB. That's OB. Oh my gosh. That's drop zone. That's guaranteed bogey. Oh, my yeah, guaranteed goodness. bogey for sure. And now, if Aaron throws a, a good drive here, he could retake the. He lead. can flip it right here. That is not a Paul Macbeth mistake that you have really ever seen in this scenario. It's a bad shot, and it's an even worse break to yeah. roll right. This has got the width. This has got oh, the width, man. and it's got just outside bullseye. We are not done yet. See, not by a long shot. And that's the thing I'm liking about Aaron right now is he's not taking bogeys. He, and so he's just kind of lingering around. Now Macbeth takes his first bogey of the round. And what happens? It could be a flip flop. Well, and let's be honest, bogey at best. Macbeth right. has two, two, 30, 240? I've How far seen, is this drop zone? I've seen many, many players not get up and down from this drop zone. Not only is it a low ceiling, it's not a shot you probably even practice because you don't think there's any chance you're not going to be in bounds, but it's a low ceiling over a hill, so you can't even quite get the perfect distance read on it. Very touchy. Low, does it push forward that's enough? Yeah, that's I think great. it does. Nicely done. Okay, so Macbeth should easily save the four, but just like that, if Aaron can tap in his great drive switch, I mean, that's a huge mistake. No, no two ways about it. This is one of those island holes where we often say it's an island kind of like Australia is in there. It gets big. There's a lot of room to be on there, and Macbeth missing that going to loom large here. This isn't a gimme. Ooh, just over the rim, but it's in. The opportunity waits now for Aaron to reclaim what has been his. Wow, what a turn of events for the solo lead. The goose yes. is loose and in for two. I should have said for the deuce. Dang it. Great birdie from Matt. Look at all those birdies he's been able to pile up. And because of the bogey from Paul, Matty O is only three back at this point with three to play. There's never been a quicker two-stroke swing hold than hole 16 at the ECC. 320 feet. My, I'm like literally like I'm so nervous right now. Have a little lad running it here, everybody. 320 feet, 312 of water carried to this island. Let's watch a couple of shots, see how these people do it. See if our lead card can do it as well. There's a good shot. I think it's two rounds in a row we see Kevin Jones hit the koozie. Nate Sexton, is this in the third round in a row we're going to see you park this hole? Yeah, of course it is. It's getting obnoxious. When you, when you throw a good forehand, is it a Nate Orem? Or no, this doesn't work that way. Not, not just yet. Not just yet. He's got to prove it to me a couple more times. I got it. <laughs> Mason Ford with another park job here on the island. Chris Clemens what up in the mix for the win due oh. to shots like that. Connor O'Reilly. Seen him a couple times throw some nice ones in here. Wow. 
Start using Bushnell official data in your own game. Check out the link in the description or go to bushnell.com slash discgolf. Or find a pin under your chair. Now, Orem, he's finding the pin with another great drive. What a back nine he is putting together, really making a run. A mistake from our two top two players, and Matt Orem could be in the hunt for the world title. This is the biggest shot yet. Oh, Matt Orm's in the hunt. Biggest shot yet for Gossage. And he's going forehand. He's gone backhand on this hole all week. Oh, what a shot. That's going to leave him very makeable. 25, scary, right at the water. Oh, frightening putt. He's but, not on the wall, though. That yeah. wall gives mm -hmm. you a little bit more awkward because you can't get the wide stance for your regular putting. Oppenheimberg chaining out for ace on this hole. Can he make the adjustment? Different disc today. A little more wind. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, so oh, close. Yeah. Count Heinberg's 39 under, and I feel like we've seen him miss 39 opportunities. If Paul misses this island right here, as we watch as him he did, do. It's the first time we've ever seen him miss the island, I think, that I can recall. Last round, how does he make the adjustment? If he misses it, Aaron makes, it's pretty much over. Down three with two to play. I got to agree with you. He ain't missing, missing it. low, but it's got power. Is it going to push all the way to the wall? No. Oh, how perfect is that? Right in front of Aaron. He gets to see Aaron's decision. <laughs> Aaron has no decision. I mean, he gets to see Aaron the result. It, the result. Aaron, Aaron has to make that putt. You don't think Aaron could lay this up with how bad he's putting? Yeah, I don't think you win a world title. I don't bet on your tail. Laying up a putt so. from inside the circle. I think, yeah. you, I think you have to knock it down. Yeah, there's no layup in this stance. No. Just low. Center, no harm, no foul. Well, a little harm potentially, because I think this one's gonna be center too, and a little higher. We're tied. What a putt on the strike, too. No doubt. Wow. Nine under. Who has the, I just, the clutch gene is just something you, how do you train for a clutch gene? It's just in your blood. Incredible circumstance there. We are tied. With two holes left. And Matt Orem, he needs to hit this. Oh, no. Oh, you hate to see that. Oh, wow. The run that he has put together, that feels like a screeching halt. That would have taken him to within two. Calvin finally gets to 40 under. Calvin Heimberg, man. It's like <laughs> no. when he's on, it's so cool. first or second. When he's off, fifth. Like <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty narrow spread of results. Rating is one of the most valuable things you get with a membership. It takes your performance in sanctioned events, compares it to the rest of the field, and gives you an empirical number to show how well you played. Rain, shine, wind is all taken into account, leaving only one thing, your play. This gives you accurate numbers to track how well you've been doing, 
in your overall improvement in the game. Get your number today. Visit pdja.com slash join. Hole 17, par four, 745 feet. You wanna throw low ceiling as far as you can here. Cannot leak right because there's OB over there on the left side. You're safe, but you could be in the woods. Pivotal drive. I just don't think you get a birdie from a bad drive here like this one. Oh, I just, boy. It's over from there. You yeah. cannot. I think it's tough, too, because you have a right-to-left crosswind. You want to throw hyzer to keep it under the limbs, but with that crosswind, it's going to lift you. If you don't throw a turnover, it could push you to the out-of-bounds. So very technical shot here. Let's see how Paul McBeth attacks it. And there's that oh, lift. Knocked straight down door open. I mean, he'll, it's going to depend where the trees are. I can imagine low cut the corner. I can imagine lay up for par. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. From that far back, there is so many things that can go wrong. And you just, I mean, at this point, you can't hand it to the other player. Here's another one that just kind of lifts. He's going to get to that left side not as far as you would like see if aaron can come through here he's been throwing this hole great this week chance to put major pressure on paul oh i think he's done it he's traveled the ceiling perfectly look at the nose up angle slide scoop walk down the fairway and put it in the perfect spot young man that is incredible <laughs> look bye. at him bye 445 past all the trees. You can't have it any better. He could go backhand hyzer. He could go forehand hyzer. There's no trees in the way besides those ones on the other side of the out-of-bounds area. But they're not that much in the way. Calvin first. Get a glimpse of what he is going to... He doesn't really have... Oh, he's going. He has this option. Macbeth certainly has it. Is... Does he get in no, bounds? No, that now? skips twice before it hops over the wall out of bounds. Okay, Macbeth is going. He's, it would be a forehand if he was laying up. Needs to clear the wall. He pushes the height perfectly. He's going around the wall. Okay. What a world. That's probably Classic shot. 70, 80 feet. Uh, just to give himself in a hundred. Sure. He's just remarkable I mean, from you back took, there. Yeah, you've taken bogey out of play, clearly. Giving yourself an outside chance. Calvin from far. Yeah. And the troubles continue here for Calvin on the 17th. Looks like a double bogey brewing for him. Orm from not a really great spot either, but he's got the low ceiling. He's got the angle. He's Ooh, got the nice, skip. Nice oh. first skip. Yeah, great skip. How close is that? 45. Come on, cameraman. Oh. All right. Big Heiser forehand. What a time for a bullseye. There are a lot more trees in the way of the Heiser forehand. Yes. Uh, the backhand kind of filters right to it. So this but is it also brings that OB long into play, though. This Very is true. such an important shot. Can he stick this close? Now, this needs to be a little wider. Yeah, this is inside. It's putting. It's closer than Paul's. It's putting, but it's about 45 feet away, I think. That is not good from that. No, it isn't. <laughs> In this match play scenario, he definitely had the advantage going into both the second, well, just going into the second shot, and now going to the third shot. He's a lot closer. All right, Macbeth, this for birdie. Come on. Oh, man. It's like you, you can't write that. Wow. You can't make it up. 80 footer. Oh my goodness. This man is made of something different. And just huge shift of the situation from Gossage's perspective. 
Oh my goodness. I remember the USDGC last year, he did the same thing on hole 17. <sighs> Deep putt yes. makes it Yes. Like, this is just something that he does. Aaron has to answer. This is not a pun in the situation, but I have goosebumps. How close is Aaron? He's far away. Wow. Yeah, I call it 50. Too high. Yep, and Heiser. That needs to sit down. I mean, how do you make that after somebody drops a 70-footer? That is the textbook definition of big putt. Have to make this. Have to force Macbeth to birdie the last. Yeah, that is no easy. That's not a gimme. Okay. It's in. It's that simple now. Macbeth, Does this birdie it for six world titles. Of anything that you've seen lately at the world championships? It kind of does. Like uh, almost every single time. Macbeth, if you haven't been paying attention to our coverage, Macbeth has been first or second in every world championships since 2012. It's just what he does. Yeah. Last year, he went into the last hole with a one-shot lead. Did not leave Utah as the world champion. Can he change the story this year? Hole 18, par 4, 691. Safe drive, absolutely paramount. From there, you have some options. If you're short, big backhand spike hyzer. If you're a little longer, low ceiling shot up the middle or high forehand spike hyzer, elevated basket, slopey green, tough to make big putts on this green. I feel like they're gonna both be in similar positions, but both going forehand out over the water. I feel like that's a pretty consistent play. Yeah. Not a lot of trouble if you have that type of power. It's all going to be up to, I feel like, the second shot coming into 18. Just got to keep it in bounds. That's in bounds. That's pretty good. That'll be about 315 to the pin. Looking down the tight tunnel. We did see Aaron miss this one left one of the rounds. Let's see if he can keep this wide enough. I love Macbeth's line. Let's see if he can match it. A yeah. little lower, but pretty similar. The width is great. The distance is great. And he yep. gets to go first, which is huge in this situation. Jeez, Calvin, take it easy on Crushed. the desk, dude. That is, wow. Within a couple feet of the OB line on the backside. Jeez. All Macbeth has to do is birdie and he wins. Depends on where Gossage goes. You can see that he's going to be going before Macbeth. Mm -hmm. If he makes some sort of mistake, it makes the Paul's yeah. decision so much. That's I don't know. You remember last year? I mean, if Aaron were to hit a tree and dropped a 200, I think Macbeth still tries to park it. I don't think he's <laughs> leaving it. Yeah. I don't think he's leaving anything to chance here if he can help it. Aaron is going big forehand over everything. Plenty of height. Can it get down in time? Can it avoid a roll away? Oh, yes. Pressure on 
And that was kind of a bad angle. Was that actually parked? I think it's pretty close. I think he's one or two steps. The crowd reacted very positively. That is right outside Bullseye. Here we go. Still tough to see. Obviously, it's a big left to right, but there's a nice little shelf by the basket. If you can land heavy angle, you're going to stick like that every time. Macbeth had the mid-range in hand. Got to think he's going to take this line that Matt's throwing here. It's, a, it's a kind of a it. sketchy line. Because it is. If you turn oh, it for over, sure. you can drift just like Matty O did right there all the way to the OB. You put hyzer on it, it, it's actually pretty thick grass. This for the world title. Low. No, didn't no. skip much. No. I feel like that's the miss you have to do in that situation with Aaron Park. At least give yourself a putt. You go deep, and you can bring that out of bounds mm -hmm. in the play, and you lose. Yeah, but, man, is this a scary basket to run a big putt at. There's rollaway potential like crazy here. I go back to the USDGC. You remember what he did on 18? He went for it. Yeah. From, mm -hmm. like, 75 yep. feet. Yeah. Yep. So this is a similar green. Yes. He will not be laying. So. No, I don't think so either. But I also think roll away is a huge oh, possibility. Doubt. Any sort of miss. Uh, he'll be for the first. Win. Yeah. For the win outside the circle. <gasps> Sit. Wow. Wow. Pretty good reaction off the basket. Aaron can force a playoff. He's giggling. Ha, I can't feel my feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. <laughs> where, where am I? Somebody yeah. let me know if my foot's behind the mini. I can't feel it at all. Matt Orem. That was for Robin. solo third. But... Regardless, third place finish from Mount Orem. Calvin and Lowe. This doesn't give Aaron confidence watching no. those two misses. For well, the playoff. 25, 20, 20, maybe less. Yes. Extra holes at the World Championships go. two years in a row. Clutch putt from Aaron. Aaron Gossage, my goodness, what a story, what an event. And we are going to extra holes first of those holes is going to be hole 16, the island hole. Aaron, How crazy is that? It, Last year, and the playoff was hole 16, the island hole. Looks like we will have a playoff which will start on hole 16, then 17, then 18. Thanks again for coming to the 2022 PDGA Professional World Disc Golf Championships. We have more disc golf to watch. If memory serves, James Conrad teed first. Yes. Yes, he did. He put it on the island, and Paul did not. Hey, guys, we have a sudden death playoff. Uh, we will start on hole 16, go 16, 17, and 18 on repeat until we have a winner. I'm going to flip a coin for who gets the first box. Paul, your heads, Aaron, your tails. And we will alternate after that first on the box. You guys go heads or tails? Tails, never fails. It is tails. Aaron. Aaron, you have the box first. Exactly luck, the gentlemen. same. Wow. Gentlemen, make your own calls. We'll be there to second if necessary. If Aaron wins this, he will be the 20th unique world champion of 40 world championships the lowest ranked player to ever do so. And he is the only person in this playoff with a winning playoff record. Obviously a smaller sample size, but Macbeth is seven and 15 in his career. Aaron is two and one. Takes a deep breath. Same shot as last time.
say mid-range heavy hyzer. Got to catch the right side. That's not in. A little nose up, pushes him short, and that's straight to the drop zone. Paul Macbeth with a shot to land on the island, possibly win his sixth world title. Still matters how close he can put this. Can he get it on? But that drop zone putt for Aaron, it's, it's makeable for sure. Of course, the wind kicks up. This is certainly it's too good. Is it all the way to the back? Yes. yes. That's a shot. It's not play. over. Aaron has to make it. It's not over. But that absolutely puts him back in the conversation. It's what is it? An eight, eighty footer? Yeah, something like that. Wow. You've got to think Paul thinks he's going to make it. It's the mindset you have to have. Aaron. Good. Oh, it's in. Oh! oh. That was oh, perfect height. Inches right. And Paul McBeth, folks, is going to have his sixth world title with one layup. That what a week so from Aaron. Oh. Cannot imagine the feeling Macbeth is having right now on this last walk across the bridge. The, the adversity that he battled this week with his body not necessarily being where it needed to be for him to feel comfortable I mean, are you kidding me with a playoff on hole 16 again? Yeah. With him going second again. I would never put my hand back on the disc in my free run up again if I was him. Six time wow. world champion. And the first player ever to overcome a three stroke deficit going into the final round of the world championships. Joining me now is our 2022 PDGA World Champion and six-time world champion, Paul McBeth. Paul, it's the most emotional I've ever seen you for a winning putt. Tell us what this means. It means a lot, man. I was in Aaron's shoes last year, and, uh, man, I feel for him because it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough, but I know he'll bounce back, and I don't know. I seem to find a way to make big putts on 17, mess it up on 18, and Number go to a playoff. Oh, no. Earlier this year... You hadn't won anything big. You hadn't taken it down. You came up short at the major. You came up short at European Open. What does this mean to come back and fight the way you did? I mean, I still struggled, you know? I still was not that good from the putting green, but I just found a way to, to push through and just continue to, to somehow get them to go in and, and put myself in this position. So, I don't know, like you said, you know, I'm pretty emotional right now. How do you dig deep? to clutch up in the way that you did on hole 17, a, a putt you just referenced. You had the very errant mistake on 15, which was surprising, but then two holes later on 17, you make it from outside of circle two. Where were you digging deep for that? I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. Give it everything you have. I was able to drop that one on 17. It gave me kind of a cushion on 18, but I should have you know, put that one a little bit closer. So often we hear you talk about how you want to chase down Kenny, how you want the most majors. You want to be the greatest of all time without question. What does it mean to get one step closer with one more world title? 
I mean, it, it's it's awesome, you know. But I just wish he was more present. You know, that's you see a lot of those, see a lot of those greatest of all time. They're present. So I want Kenny to be more present. What does this say about your overall legacy as a player? I mean, this is my 15th year doing this professionally, so I feel like it's still growing. I want to continue doing it and continue showing up at these majors and showing up at the big events. So I don't know. I just want to keep building. You put on a show this week. Please tell the world, give any thanks or accolades you need to send out there. Just, I mean, thank you all for watching. Thank you to my family back home in California. I know they're watching. I gave him a heart attack. I feel bad for my grandfather. He's 91, so he was there watching. So thank you, and thanks to my family in Virginia. My wife's here. My friends are here. My sponsors are here. Thank you all. It took four years, but you are now again world champion. Paul McBath, your 2022 PDGA world champion. King's got his crown back. Incredible. I just can't believe how many things went back and forth there on those last four. We knew that those last four were going to be pivotal, but not that they would not share a similar score on those last four holes. We take a look back. Yeah, just incredible round. Aaron Gossage, aside from what happened on the playoff hole, two bogeys all week, hole one at Jones, everything else clean. I mean, you just have to... Take your hat off to the, one of the most incredible performances ever in a world championships Aaron just played. And Macbeth still doing his thing, man. Just getting birdies, willing putts in, getting it done. Two things I take away from this is, I mean, what a comeback from last year. To think about what Paul went through after the holy shot and have something taken away from you in that fashion to come back and then dig deep, come out on top, I mean, that's storybook finish right there. And the other thing is the field is so talented. Gossage comes out of nowhere and we're gonna be seeing that a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to be a part of that and to see the field grow like it is. I just wanna say a few thank yous. Uh, thanks to everybody here that's watching the live stream, YouTube. Thanks to my guys here in the booth with me. Let's give it up for the camera guys, for the editors. <laughs> for the music. Uh, staying up late, putting together a great show. And man, the players, I mean, you, you can't ask for more than this. This was incredible. Macbeth, congratulations to you, man. On top again. Thanks, guys.